we are going to discuss greenhouse gas management in the public sector. By way of an agenda, I'm going to discuss the climate goals of uh, the United States and Canada, the role of strategic energy management in those goals, uh, the greenhouse gas emissions in schools and municipalities, and then I'm going to have help discussing this topic by uh, Calvin Lechette from MCCAC, and we're going to discuss the Municipal Energy Manager Program, and we're going to discuss the greenhouse gas reduction in the town of Cochrane. Um, I'm going to finish it all up by talking about the next steps in reducing greenhouse gas emissions in the public sector. My name is Carrie Macklin. I am the Senior Director of Strategic Energy Management at ClearResult. That means that I oversee all of the strategic energy management programs across North America. So let's talk about big goals. So uh, the Paris climate goals for the US and Canada, um, the two countries have set targets in order to meet those goals. Um, in the US, the target is a 50 to 52% reduction of greenhouse gas emissions below 2005. Um, they're hoping to get there by 2030. And then um, the long-term goal is a net zero emissions uh, by 2050. And then in Canada, uh, they're aiming for 40 to 45 percent below 2005 emissions by 2030, and similarly, a net zero emissions target by 2050. Um, those are very big goals, and it takes uh, a lot of, uh, of different sectors working together um, to, to get to those goals. And so in this general session, we're going to focus very specifically on the public sector. So one thing I like to do when I'm thinking about the greenhouse gas emissions is where exactly greenhouse gas emissions um, is coming from. Uh, so this pie chart is uh, it represents the global greenhouse gas emissions um, from everything and where those greenhouse gas emissions are coming from. So uh, the kind of the biggest thing that pops out in this pie chart is, is energy, of course. Um, energy represents about 75% of the greenhouse gas emissions globally. Um, and that is represented from a number of different types of sectors. So um, energy use in industry, uh, transportation, road transportation, and then you know, energy use in buildings, including commercial buildings and residential buildings. Um, so energy being the largest slice of greenhouse gas emissions in the um, globally, but also typically in any organization, energy is the largest slice, um, which is why we're, talking about this, right, as clear result, we change the way people use energy, we inherently change the way people uh, use greenhouse gases. Um, uh, in addition, when you think about the reduction of greenhouse gases, it requires an expertise around many types of energy use. So it's not just one type, it's not just industry or buildings, it really, you need to look um, across all different types of energy sectors. Um, and then finally, when discussing very specifically the public sector organizations, um, they have emissions from a variety of the sources in that in that pie chart. So, um, you know, it's not just buildings, it's not just buildings and transport, it's, um, it's you know, a number of other emissions too. And they may even um, deal with some land use um, in, in agriculture. So first let's define the public sector. Um, so the public sector is generally defined as anything that the government, um, that a government controls. And um, so that can be schools, uh, can be higher education, it can be municipalities, the federal government, uh, the different agencies of the federal government, um, the healthcare uh, sector in Canada, and then um, you know the postal service, and of course there's many others. Um, and looking at that bar chart that you're seeing there, it's just kind of another way to slice that, where are the greenhouse gas emissions coming um, from, and this um, happens to be in the United States, and you can see that the two biggest bars here, the electricity and heat um, and transport, and then finally buildings is that third one. Um, you know, those are all represented in this public sector um, topic. And so, you know, I'm, I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, specific sectors within the public sector. I'm gonna talk about schools, um, uh, both K through 12 and higher education. And then um, my guests are gonna talk about municipalities, but um, this, this is a big sector and there's a lot of consideration in the sector. So um, we're gonna touch on a few of them here. So let's talk about strategic energy management and why, we, um, why we're why we kind of discussing strategic en energy management, management specifically here. So this uh, is my uh, strategic energy management snail. I call him Sammy. 
Um, he kind of shows the continuous improvement cycle that we focus on when we're talking about strategic energy management. So this is really creating um, energy as a manageable resource. So um, taking the approach that you would take with any other sort of cost, um, focusing on energy use and, and training champions at sites, um, you know, developing plans to reduce those energy, uh, you know, to reduce the energy and greenhouse gases, um, create targets. Um, and we do that, this a clear result with kind of three main mechanisms. Uh, we do collaborative workshops. Uh, we, we get uh, groups of folks together to learn from each other. Um, we have very skilled coaches that do one-on-one -on -one coaching with the facilities to make sure that they're, you know, developing those plans and staying on target. And then finally, we have very sophisticated technical and engineering services in order to help those organizations that we work with to um, understand what things they need to do to reduce their energy and, and therefore their greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so we're aiming to change culture and create a, a culture of energy efficiency in those industries that we're working with and um, very specifically in the, in the public sector. Um, so let me talk a little bit about schools and, uh, and how they are, um, uh, you know, contributing to the greenhouse gas emissions. So in the US, uh, the K through 12 school facilities is actually the second largest infrastructure expense in the country. So it's a very big part of um, our government spending. Um, about 72 million metric tons of CO2 each year are emitted by the K through 12 schools. That's an equivalent to about 18 coal plants, right? Or 8.6 million houses. So um, a lot of, of carbon being emitted by the K through 12 schools in the US. Um, in Canada, similarly, if you look at the entire education sector, um, the, the, uh, that sector is about 16% of the total emissions for the country of Canada. Um, and just looking, you know, one click down at the K-12 schools, that is about 47 million metric tons of CO2 each year. Um, a number of studies have shown that as much as a quarter of the energy that districts are paying for is wasted. Um, so meaning it is not managed well, it is um, not energy that's used to heat the classrooms or power lights or computers, it is really lost to poor management of that energy use. Um, and so that's really the heart of what strategic energy management is trying to get to, which is that waste, you know, trying to manage and, and get the energy use into the most efficient possible. Um, in Clear Results SEM programs, we work with a, a lot of schools. In fact, schools, K through 12 schools in particular, but also higher education is our highest, um, our number one sector that we work with. So currently we are working with about 740 participating schools. Um, that is about 780,000 em uh, annual emissions from uh, in, in tons of CO2. Um, and it, in general, uh, that work that we're doing to reduce their uh, their emissions has been extremely su successful. And in 2020, we, um, we saved 36,000 tons of, of carbon dioxide just from the school sector. Um, you know, so that, and that is also taking into account the um, complexities of the school sector uh, last year with, with COVID. Um, that's an average about 4.6% savings from strategic energy management. So really kind of driving home the results of being able to manage energy and in, and in turn managing the greenhouse gas emissions. So I want to highlight one school that we're, that we're working with. Um, this is Evanston Township High School. Um, they're lo located in Evanston, Illinois. Um, and I'm only going to focus on the high school. And they have a, a pretty big district, but the high school itself is uh, 3,567 students, so about 3,500 students. Um, and uh, one reason I wanted to spotlight Evanston is that they are um, really leading their sustainability um, or their greenhouse gas reduction targets are coming from the students, which we actually see across uh, the board with K through 12. Um, the students are very active and very interested in this. Um, and they started a student-led sustainability committee, committee and climate action team. And they have a goal of being carbon neutral by 2050 as well. Um, and so they are really kind of leading the charge. The students are leading the charge for the school board to put targets in place and to focus on greenhouse gas reduction. So it's really inspiring to see that. And they've been very active in the strategic energy management program in Illinois. And, um, and they you know, have uh, really you know, seen a lot of reduction through that program. 
Um, I wanted to highlight a comment uh, from a, a junior at that high school, Mia. Uh, she is the president of the Climate Action Team and the co-chair of the um, Evanston High School Sustainability Committee. So um, a real go-getter. Um, but she says that she they wanted to create change and not just ask the school board to do it. Um, she says, if we make sustainability another goal under the Board of Education, that means they will work towards it and that they will put plans and set those in place. Um, so that is the goal of the students in this, in this, um, at this high school. And they are, they are focusing on energy and strategic energy management to try to hit those goals. So pretty impressive um, work by the students of Ev Evanston. And so to move a little bit to higher education, um, so the landscape of higher education um, uh, in the US, uh, the higher education facilities actually emit about 130 million metric tons of carbon dioxide each year. That's more than the K through 12 schools. Um, it's equivalent to about 30 coal plants or 14 and a half million houses. Um, in Canada, similarly, uh, if you look at the educational facilities um, in Canada, the higher education emits about 60% of the total greenhouse gas emissions in that sector. So it, it is a, a bigger um, uh, a bigger emitting source than the K through 12 schools. Um, and they, uh, so in Canada, that's about 71 million metric tons of carbon dioxide each year. Um, and, and based on the studies, about 88% of those emissions are coming from purchased elect electricity and stationary combustion, which means um, heating and, and natural gas combustion. Um, and so, you know, when you look at strategic energy management, um, that is really the focus of strategic energy management is that purchase, purchase electricity and stationary combustion. So it's a very important part of that higher education and greenhouse gas reduction um, strategy. Um, and the other thing I wanted to point out here is that um, higher education and, and, and universities and campuses in general, they um, also make a pretty big impact on the community they're in. So just to take one example from the um, city of Ann Arbor, which houses the University of Michigan, that is my alma mater, that's where I went to school. Um, they did a study and saw that about 32% of the entire city's emissions are, is actually coming from that university. So um, those, you know, the higher education is really entwined with the municipality in that case. And so the success at the university is success at the, um, at the, at the municipality as well. And so, you know, I, I think that it just kind of goes to show how important it is that these different sectors are connected to each other and discussing um, their strategies and working together. So to highlight one higher education um, program that, uh, or one um, college that we're working with, this is uh, St. Mary's College in California. They're in Moraga, California. Um, their campus has 18 facilities, but they're really focused on uh, five of them in strategic energy management. Um, they have 3,800 students at that, at that college, and they have been very active in um, climate action plan, and they have ambitious targets to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. They've created that climate action plan, um, and they have determined that behavioral changes, which is kind of the core of the strategic energy management program, um, is the most cost-effective and long-term action that they can do. Um, and we actually have a video testimonial from the energy manager at St. Mary's. His name is Matt Jin, um, and he is going to talk about how SEM is helping meet their climate goals. Thank you for having me. I'm Matt Jin, the Director of Maintenance and Operations for St. Mary's College of California. About two years ago, our Director of Sustainability, Dr. Andrevno, suggested that we join the SEM program as a way of performing an ongoing energy audit. We had tried a couple of energy efficiency programs previously and found it difficult to progress past the initial audit stage and into the implementation stage. Uh, what was attractive about this program for me was the cohort model of engaging with other businesses and institutions also trying to achieve energy savings and the ability to share lessons learned with each other as we progress through the program. We found it to be a very rewarding program and used it to implement a number of low cost energy efficiency changes over the last two years. Uh, but one of the best ways we used the program was helping it both inform our climate action plan and being one of the tools we used for the goals we identified in our climate action plan. In 2020, again, mostly through the work of Director of Sustainability and Drevno, St. Mary's created its inaugural climate action plan. In it, we identified our values as an institution and how best to reach the goals those values created. 
Uh, our number one value in our climate action plan is tackling the climate crisis with moral leadership. As an institution, we at St. Mary's believe in sustaining an environment where all people have clean air to breathe, clean water to drink, and access to the necessary resources to live a healthy life. Because of that, St. Mary's is committed to protecting people, the environment, and our common resources. From there, we set some goals. Uh, we've set ambitious targets for reducing greenhouse gas emissions to minimize destabilizing the global climate. I know across the U.S. we've all been experiencing extreme weather, droughts, longer and more severe fire seasons, and floods. And then we looked at uh, how to achieve those goals through actions. When prioritizing actions, we use the Climate Action Priority Triangle to conclude that the most cost-effective, longest-term actions that the college could take are reducing energy use and emissions through behavioral changes, knowing that reducing our energy waste is the most sustainable way forward. Uh, that in turn led to our approach. And in that, we especially utilized how ICM supports the St. Mary's Climate Action Plan. Our top target areas are energy, transportation, policy, and education. And the ICM program drives action in the areas of energy, policy, and education. Uh, first in energy, uh, we achieve energy efficiency through strategic energy management, prioritizing energy-related projects to yield the most greenhouse gas reductions and financial savings. In policy, the SEM program supports student-led initiatives for residents and campus users' behavioral changes. And in education, the strategic energy management program supports inter-campus dialogue around operational behavioral changes. Uh, we've brought in people from our campus recreation center, our school of science and research community, uh, as well as campus housing to engage them in how best to manage energy use and waste in their areas. A couple of the other great tools that the SEM program made available to us were the Opportunity Register and the Energy Model. The Opportunity Register is a tool that the SEM and St. Mary's team use to identify and prioritize projects. The best part of the Opportunity Register is that it's a living document that can continuously be updated as opportunities are identified and implemented, showing progress made, and just how many more opportunities there always are. We also have access to our energy model, which is a great tool to measure energy trends and savings on campus and to check the effectiveness of the opportunities we've invested in to make sure they're having the impact we expected. Uh, I've especially enjoyed seeing the difference in our energy use versus expected use as we've continued to change how we use energy on our campus. Uh, all in all, the SEM program has been exactly what was promised to us. It's a great way to fundamentally change your relationship with energy at your facilities. Thank you again for having me and good luck on your own energy efficiency journeys. So now um, I want to move on to municipalities, which is um, the next sector in the public sector that we're going to discuss. Um, so just to lay the groundwork here, uh, we're looking at a map of the US and um, it's showing that slightly less than half of the large US cities have established a greenhouse gas reduction target. Um, but really, that means that about 40 million people in the United States live in a city with an active and fully formed climate action plan. So many of us um, in many of the cities that have been represented in the clear result um, videos that you've been seeing um, are actually living in municipalities that have uh, GHG reduction targets. Um, and, you know, I think it shows that we have, uh, you know, we have a, a lot of improvement, but we're also kind of well on our way to um, to you know, seeing those targets and trying to achieve those through energy management. Um, and um, in a minute, I'm going to hand it over to our friends to the north. Um, in, in Canada, uh, we, we've seen that municipalities have influenced over about 50% of the greenhouse gases that are um, emitted by Canada each year. And um, so they have a big role to play in the, um, in the greenhouse gas emissions targets for that country. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Calvin, who's going to talk about the Municipal Energy Managers Program. Calvin? Awesome. Uh, thanks, Carrie, and thanks to ClearResult for the opportunity to present. Uh, hi, everyone. As Carrie mentioned, my name is Calvin Leckelt. I am the Energy Efficiency Program Lead with the Municipal Climate Change Action Centre in Alberta, Canada. And in this presentation, I'm going to give a, a high-level overview uh, of our Municipal Energy Manager program, why we launched this program, uh, a high-level high overview, overview of, of the program the process, process, and some of the results that we've seen to date. 
So for those of you who are not familiar with the Action Center, we were established in 2009 as a collaborative initiative between the Alberta Urban Municipalities Association, or AUMA, and the, uh, the Rural Municipalities of Alberta, which are both um, municipal associations within the province. And we are, are uh, within that partnership as well is the government of Alberta. And we're primarily funded by the government of Alberta. And the Action Center's mandate is really to provide funding, technical assistance, and education to Alberta's uh, municipalities, nonprofits, and schools to help them address climate change. Uh, we like to start our presentations with a short land acknowledgement. So this presentation is being delivered from Treaty 6 territory in Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge the many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit, whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries and whose presence continues to enrich our vibrant communities. And for those of you who are not familiar with the province of Alberta, we're situated directly north of Montana and just to the east of the Rocky Mountains in Canada. So getting into the Municipal Energy Manager Program or the MEM program for short, uh, the program launched in 2019 and provides funding for municipalities to hire an energy manager to obviously manage energy use, uh, but also become more energy efficient and ultimately reduce greenhouse gas emissions throughout municipal operations. Uh, the program funds up to 80% of the energy manager's base salary uh, for up to two years and delivers ongoing support uh, to ensure energy managers continue making progress. There are currently 23 MEMs active uh, throughout the province, representing 33 municipalities, as the program allows for partnerships between neighboring communities, such as a county and uh, a town within the county, um, to actually share the energy manager. Uh, other municipalities are still in the recruitment process, uh, and once that is finalized, we expect uh, the total number of, of active MEMs to be at uh, 27 across the province, representing a total of 38 municipalities uh, in both rural and urban areas. Uh, just for context, that's about 12% of the municipalities in Alberta and represents about 20% of the overall population. Next slide. Uh, so why should a municipality hire an energy manager? Really, what is the core issue that this program is trying to solve? Uh, well, uh, like I said, we, we've been around since 2009 and we've consistently heard from municipalities over the, over the years that they want to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, they want to reduce consumption, uh, but they really struggle with a variety of organizational barriers such as limited uh, internal capacity and uh, limited expertise to identify the projects and ultimately implement them. So the MEM program solves those issues by building up that internal capacity uh, to identify the opportunities, actually have someone lead the projects and ultimately unlock those energy and cost savings for the municipality. Uh, another core component of the program is that uh, MEMs really end up leading their municipalities towards uh, stronger uh, energy conservation cultures. And throughout this journey, each energy manager receives coaching support, access to tools and workshops, uh, and a whole lot more from both the Clear Result and the Action Center. Uh, and all of these supports are free of charge and covered by the program. So the program process, um, the, the program generally is structured around uh, strategic energy management frameworks, uh, such as ISO 50001, and includes a plan, do, check, act methodology that aims for continuous improvement. So the five actions listed on this slide are the core program activities. There's a lot more in addition to this, um, but really energy managers start out by identifying the large energy consuming facilities. They complete energy benchmarking on uh, their chosen portfolio. They develop a customized energy management plan with uh, specific greenhouse gas uh, reduction targets. They assess and, and, and improve energy management practices and policies within the municipality. They lead those efficiency and renewable energy projects and continuously engage with the organization while reporting on their progress.
So getting into the results, uh, the, the individuals who have filled these MEM positions across the province are an uh, extremely passionate group of people, um, and they're really leading significant change in their communities. And, and we as an organization are, are really proud of the work that they're doing. Uh, on average, MEMs are aiming for about a, a GHG reduction uh, of about 6.8% compared to their baseline year emissions. They've completed about uh, just over 200 projects to date, uh, achieved an annual GHG reduction of 3,800 tons of CO2 equivalent and an annual cost savings of about $800,000. And we just expect these numbers to continue uh, uh, increasing as more energy managers uh, join the program and as some of the existing energy managers move on to their second year. And out of all of these metrics, I just wanted to highlight that um, in the municipal context, the, the cost savings are, are generally the most important to municipal councils. Um, so having a high number there uh, really helps. Oh, my, my light turned off. There we go. Um, having a high number there really helps uh, demonstrate that value uh, that energy management brings to the community. Next slide, please. And finally, I just wanted to wrap up and show uh, some of the organizational impacts that these positions are having, which is captured in this energy management assessment spider chart. So this is a self-assessment activity that takes place when energy managers uh, first join the municipality and then again after the first year to show uh, and really measure that growth between the two years uh, and, and specifically growth in these 12 areas that pertain to energy management. So. Uh, this chart is actually an average of all the scores for all the MEMs that have moved on to the second year. Um, and you can see in the first assessment in blue, relatively low scores in, the, in all the different areas, um, but they all level up during the next year that's shown in green. And, and this is a lot of growth really in, in only 12 months. Um, and I, I think it shows the transformative impact of the MEM program, um, but also the ambition for continued success as dictated by the black line that shows the goal for the end of the program. Uh, and with that, uh, I will pass it on to Devin LaFleche, the Sustainability and Transit Coordinator for the Town of Cochrane, uh, actually one of the first energy managers supported by the program. Take it away, Devin. Thank you, Calvin. Um, next slide, please. So I'm Devin LaFleche, Sustainability and Transit Coordinator for the Town of Cochrane. I'm also known as the Municipal Energy Manager here in Cochrane. Um, I'll be giving you kind of my first-hand experience as the Municipal Energy Manager here in Cochrane. So next slide, please. Just a bit of context. Uh, in Cochrane, we're innovative, bold, and dynamic. We're a community that creates its destiny by building on our proud heritage. We're often at the top of the list for Canada's fastest growing municipality, as we've more than doubled in size in the last decade. We're located 20 minutes northwest of Calgary, and we're just in the foothills uh, right up below the Rocky Mountains. So a beautiful place to be. We also have a vibrant tech industry with Four Eyes, MC Things, and the national headquarters for Garmin. So you notice we really try and capture that innovative nature of our community in the approach for uh, the MEM program. Next slide, please. So with the MEM program, uh, the structure as well as the support coming from Clear Result really helped put us on the right pathway for identifying efficiencies, creating an energy management plan, and we really structured it around this tier program uh, that Clear Result provided, which was first look at kind of low and no cost, changing set points, as well as behavioral changes, then looking at a bit more costly capital replacement, and then as you've lowered your energy usage, then looking at renewables, because you actually require less renewable offsets. This has really helped us reduce our GHG emissions and set us on the right path. The other key part of the program is having a, a person like myself in this position, where you have a project manager, someone who's advocating for these projects to really go chase funding opportunities and just make everybody aware of how we can take action. And finally, a key part has been staff empowerment. So it's not a matter of me running around, turning off all the lights, getting mad at people. It's really educating them on what they can do, how can they take action, to uh, make change here in the office, as well as at home. Uh, next slide. So for program initiatives, we started out by doing energy scans of our largest facilities, identifying those low and no cost initiatives, as well as some larger ones, creating that energy management plan uh, that we could move forward as we could start to see savings, create uh, different funding opportunities. Uh, after that, or as part of this, we actually created a consumption reduction team 
which is an internal team open to all town staff who are interested in finding efficiencies across organization. Um, one of the first projects we identified was LED lighting upgrades across our town facilities and our rec center. Uh, this is a great way to create a lot of savings, uh, create some sort of source of future funding. Uh, and also the next step, we're now looking at creating uh, an engagement campaign around educating people on what we did, what were our savings, and then this new bucket bulb lighting exchange program where a resident or a business can come in, purchase lighting at a net bulk order price, reducing their ROI, and then they can take action as well. So this is really key to our community engagement. We also created a sustainable building standard. So we now do lead shadowing. As a fast growing municipality, we have lots of uh, capital projects. So we just wanna make sure we do our due diligence on efficiency as well. We've also done a paperless uh, processes. So we've actually mapped out our processes, looked at where can we find efficiency for resources, time, as well as customer experience. And then lastly, renewable energy projects. Uh, next slide. So for our renewable energy projects, we have two very large ones we're currently looking at. Uh, the first being our SLS Family Sports Center. It's a large multiplex here in Col Cochrane. Uh, we're actually looking at having it 100% funded through provincial and federal grants at 2.75 megawatts. It'd be the largest municipal rooftop solar farm in Canada. So again, great opportunity there. It would actually reduce our GHG emissions by roughly 1,700 tons and have energy savings of roughly 275,000 per year. Another project we're looking at is our Horse Creek Solar Park. It'd be tied into the Horse Creek Park that we're looking at creating this large sports park. Uh, we're actually doing a public-private partnership with an inter-pipeline. They're just located to the northwest of the site and it would go behind the meter for for interpipeline, reducing their emissions by over 200,000 or 2,000 tons of CO2. And we'd be looking at in this partnership, having them fund the operations of the sports park. We also are with our network of MEMs that Calvin mentioned, we, we took a look at our delivery charges for street and traffic lights and realized they were really quite high at 90% for the delivery cost. So together we're working as a group to advocate to the pro province as well as Alberta Utility Commission to reduce that delivery cost, even just a 10% savings would be $90,000 in savings for Cochrane, as well as savings for municipalities across Alberta. So another key part of the program has been energy modeling and monitoring. So we implement these projects, but we're really making sure that we actually track, are we seeing the savings? And as we start to see those savings and prove it, we're going to council and looking at creating a reserve fund so that we'll have this pool of funding to create more uh, energy efficiency projects and lower that bottom line as well. Next slide. Um, for success stories through the MEM program, we've uh, implemented four level two EV charging stations. We're also looking at EV feasibility study to look at transitioning our fleet over to electric vehicles. Uh, we're actually looking at installing 10 more level two EV charging stations and leveraging a uh, a grant offered by MCCAC. Uh, also in my role, I cover transit. So we launched uh, Cochrane On Demand Local Transit. It's Canada's first fully on-demand stop-to-stop transit service. It's been wildly successful for now moving to a regional integration, looking at connecting into Calgary as well as BAMP. So lowering our emissions as well through uh, transportation. In terms of uh, pro uh, project investment, we're looking at roughly 11 million in funding largely leveraged through grants and P3 partnerships. And then we're also uh, lastly, just looking at community partnerships. So working with businesses, uh, as well as we're working with our Cochrane High School Sustainable Development Committee. They're actually a leader in the renewable space, having done three phases of solar. They did an adopt a panel program, raising over $70,000 in funding, as well as a small wind turbine. So a very passionate group. We realized why not partner with them? They're very excited to come into these real projects and, and really help support these projects as well. Next slide. Um, finally, for uh, success stories, we had a target to reduce our GHG emissions by 5%. We're now projected to do 9%, which was great to see. In terms of organizational improvements, we've, uh, we really started, you can see that blue, Calvin mentioned the EMA, you can see our baseline. In year, from year one, we've actually expanded out quite, quite a bit in most areas. And then you can see we're looking to expand out pretty much all the way. Uh, and even if we don't make this, at least we now have a plan and we have something to work towards. So we can see, hey, why are we not meeting this? And as an organization, uh, move to this uh, culture of efficiency 
And a key part of that has been our consumption reduction team. Again, pulling people from different parts of the organization, getting them involved, getting them to buy in and, and provide feedback and just feel a part of this. And we've also looked at our policies. So we had very strong sustainability and energy policies. Uh, what we had done with them though is shelf them. So taking them off the shelf, actually start tracking them, making sure that we're, we're following the steps and, and using the plan, not just planning for planning sake. Also, we looked at, for example, our procurement policy. We used to require that anyone who was submitting an application gave us three paper copies and a USB. We would just use the USB and kind of recycle the paper copies. So we realized this isn't very efficient. We moved completely online now. This is more efficient from both the town side and the applicant, uh, better customer service experience and resources. So that's been a really key change there. And then lastly, just uh, another key part of the program is this ongoing savings. So just for our low and no cost initiatives, we're looking at roughly $150,000 in annual energy savings. So this is something really key to municipalities that we're constantly, how do you do uh, more with less? Uh, you're always looking to add more staff, but tight on cost. This is a great way to lower your bottom line, find efficiency, improve comfort. So I'm gonna pass it back to, to Carrie now to finish off the presentation. Okay, uh, thanks, Devin. That was um, that was awesome, and Calvin as well. Um, I think probably my um, my favorite part of Devin's presentation was when he went over um, how they are learning from other municipalities, and as well as how they're partnering with their schools in their community. So, you know, as I was talking about earlier in the presentation, how important it is and how connected these public sector organizations are. Um, the town of Cochrane really um, illustrates how important it is to connect to um, to the schools in their in their municipality, and then with the other municipalities in Alberta. And um, really, it is a it, it's an extremely innovative program that's run up there um, by MCCAC, and um, and we're really appreciative to be partners with with them to run this program. And um, I've been just so pleased to see the results from it. Um, and so I, I wanted to, to finish up and, um, and actually expand a little bit on that pyramid that Devin showed in his presentation. Um, and I'm going to kind of steal from our, uh, from our video testimonial, St. Mary's College. Um, they, in their climate action plan, they actually had a very similar pyramid. They're calling it the climate action priority triangle. Um, but you can see that the principles here really kind of um, show exactly what we're talking about around um, management of greenhouse gases. So um, the base of the pyramid, the most important starting point is to reduce that energy use and um, greenhouse gas emissions through more efficient practices and behavior. So by making sure that you are getting as efficient and becoming as efficient as possible and managing the waste that, that exists in all organizations, um, you've given yourself a good base to then um, really see the benefits of those other rungs on that triangle. So moving up the triangle to improve um, energy efficiency with more efficient appliances and buildings. So that's that capital projects, um, you know, spending money and investing in capital improvement in order to, um, you know, to reduce your greenhouse gases. And then, um, then the, you know, moving up to the renewable energy. And as Devin said, making sure that your base uh, usage and your base emissions are as low as possible, and then you need less uh, renewable offsets um, and you and you know it's it's less expensive to offset your usage if you're being um, very efficient with the energy that you're using. And then um, just to add to that pyramid, so adding one more piece at the top, um, a lot of times we talk about carbon offsets as a way to offset greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and you know as St. Mary's says here and, and we think as well is that that purchasing of carbon offset is really the very top of that. So it should only be done once you have those other three rungs on that on that um, triangle, um, because you know you want to make sure that is the smallest piece of um, of greenhouse gas reduction. Um, it's a hot topic. Offsets are um, you know especially I think because it's there's a lot of trading involved, but um, uh, but really it's you know from an energy management standpoint, we want to reduce our emissions. We want to manage our energy use and and, and greenhouse gases. 
um, and, um, and then do the capital projects and then do renewable energy and then finally purchase the remainder on, on the carbon offset. So um, that is kind of the philosophy of strategic energy management and why um, you know, we've seen such, such success in the public sector um, in reducing um, energy and greenhouse gas reduction. So um, that concludes our discussion of greenhouse gases, um, uh, greenhouse gas management in the, in the public sector. I really wanna thank my guest speakers again. That was an awesome presentation. Um, and I'm gonna stick around, uh, we're all gonna stick around to answer questions uh, with Seth. So I think I'll, uh, I'll throw it over to Seth. Thanks, y'all. That that was absolutely fantastic, and um, you know, I do I do have tons of questions personally, um, but I mean, let's let's just jump in, um, Devin. Starting with you, um, you know, as you think about kind of on the municipal level, and again, you know, kind of channeling Ryan Holiday, you know, like what were the biggest challenges you faced while while trying to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and then and then how did those challenges become opportunities? How did you overcome those? I would say the the biggest challenge. Or Usually it's not finding the projects that's the issue. There's always lots of opportunity to, hey, we could reduce here. It's really the education part, the project um, advocacy and being that champion. That's really where you need to uh, make sure you get that top down buy-in. We did try this consumption reduction team that has a bottom up approach, but we made sure we had our chief administrative officer on there because we need to make sure that at the top level, level there's this buy-in. And I think for them also seeing like, they were seeing more gaps in the organization than just energy. We actually called it the energy reduction team. And then they said, why can't we just go consumption? Because they realized like, <laughs> it's not just energy, it was resources, it was time. So they all kind of play together. And I think that was a great way to see that we can be more efficient uh, all across the organization. And energy was a very key part in the savings. Again, Calvin uh, alluded to it. It's usually cost that's the big driver. So again, trying to get people to see the other side as well for the GHG reduction and just even uh, just getting people more aware. The education was a big part, so. Did you see kind of a synergy in the kind of the mix of that top down plus bottom up? Oh, definitely. I think that you need the two. Um, you, you definitely get all the great ideas coming from the bottom up and, and there's so much more buy-in than just putting posters up or stickers, but actually having people understand well, how much does it actually cost for me to leave my light on overnight? Again, we've moved to motion sensors and they've kind of got that idea of like, oh, sometimes my, I might not move very much and my motion sensor will turn off, but there's a really good value in that because we're not leaving the light on all the time. So I yeah, say- shout out, shout out to Calvin for demonstrating that in the presentation. <laughs> right? Thanks, Calvin. <laughs> I had a feeling that was going to happen. <laughs> Calvin, Calvin's walking the walk for sure. Um, it, Calvin, actually moving on to you, you know, since this is a really innovative program design, you know, how would you say the program performed in relation to expectations? And then, you know, off of that, kind of what kind of advice would you give to any clients who are interested in implementing a program like this? Yeah, well, at least the first part of that question when it comes to expectations, um, I think it's really exceeded our expectations. We uh, really have blown our uh, participation numbers out of the water. We were kind of hoping for, you know, somewhere in between 15 to 20 energy managers across the province, and uh, we're up to 27. So that's been great to see. I think municipalities, um, sometimes, you know, there can be a little bit of a competitive spirit in Alberta. Um, some municipalities, you know, see their neighbor participating and in, in, in a program like this, you know, they see news releases, um, and then they kind of stop and think, well, hey, why aren't we doing something like this, right? Um, and, and, and reaping all the benefits along the way. So yeah, it's definitely exceeded our expectations and we see it across all the other programs that we run. Um, energy managers are pushing participation in all of the programs across the board. Um, whereas in the past, they may not have had that capacity for someone to, to lead all of those additional projects. Generally speaking, it's, it's typically someone, at least from an, a, an energy efficiency standpoint, um, it's someone you know, running this program off the side of their desk when they need to also be worrying about, you know, maintaining the facility and, and all of those other things. So yeah, it's been, it's been really great so far. And um, all things considered, we're still early, relatively early on in the process. Devin is, is in his second year. Um, 
but we have quite a few uh, energy managers that are a little bit or a little bit earlier on. Um, so some of those stats that I showed uh, earlier, I think those are really just going to go up exponentially, which will be great. Um, as for advice to other uh, you know, jurisdictions that would be looking into a program like this, um, I think I would just advise that you know you do a market scan, look at all the other jurisdictions that run similar programs to this. Um, there are quite a few. Ours is a little bit unique, um, but try to learn from those. But but generally speaking. Um, they will all follow a fairly similar format in that plan, do, check, act, you know, that strategic management, uh, strategic sure, energy, sure. Uh, energy management framework. So, yeah, that's, I, I just advise looking into to that and, and uh, reaching out to ClearResult if you have support. Thanks. Carrie, mo moving on to you. Um, and, you know, for the, 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 the school's concept really kind of hit me close to my heart. And for those of you who don't know, Clear Result really got its start um, delivering on school programs. And then I actually started with Clear Result working on a school assessment program in Indiana. So I was just thrilled to see the impact that we can have on the schools. And I had no idea um, just how much um, K through 12 contributed to greenhouse gas emissions. Um, you know, Carrie, what are some of the unique considerations for the school? sector, you know, when implementing a greenhouse gas reduction strategy? Yeah, so, you know, one of the things that uh, Devin was just talking about with that bottom up and top down approach, I think is extremely important in schools. And we're seeing this across the board, um, even in places where, um, you know, it might be in those areas that don't have, uh, the municipalities don't have fully formed climate goals. Um, the students at the school are still um, concerned about greenhouse gas emissions and greenhouse gas reduction. And we have been seeing that across the board. We've been seeing that the student-led organizations um, are really pushing the school boards. Um, just like that example I gave in Illinois, um, you know, they're, they're pushing the school boards to create more greenhouse gas reduction, to take action. Um, and then, you know, the school board themselves, once they get on board, they may be on board, you know, before or maybe pushed by the students. But once they're on board, they're able to really kind of put those plans in place and have them, um, you know, um, have the support of the of the school board. And so I think just like uh, Devin was talking about in the municipalities, that kind of two pronged approach is really important. Um, and we're seeing that in many of our in many of our districts across the country. Um, I had a number of other examples of schools um, uh, that I kind of put together for this, you know, one in, in Oklahoma whose students created a um, renewable energy uh, solar team and, and really pushed um, and even lobbied with the, um, with the Oklahoma legislation to, um, to push renewable energy. Um, there's another one in, in Nevada, Carson City. Um, who's, who had that kind of top-down approach where, um, you know, their director of sustainability, um, you know, created some action plans. And so I think that there's a lot of different districts and a lot of different um, personalities within the districts. And, and it's really important to just um, have the advocacy from uh, both the top and, and the students themselves. Um, and, and we're sure. seeing a, a lot more engagement um, and and just knowing where to start and creating a very comprehensive plan in order to actually achieve those targets. Plan to check. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you to all of you. Thanks, Carrie, Devin, Calvin. Um, also a virtual um, shout out and thank you to Matt Jinn with St. Mary's for uh, sharing his story.